Hi, how are you guys doing today? I am super excited to be coming to you guys live again. Uh, you know, today's topic is on one of my favorite things. Now, if you are new to me, you don't know anything about the things that I like, but let me start to share. So I love superheroes. I love Superman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, all of those things. So today's topic is really around the cape that we wear um, in our travel business and how we actually need to take that bad boy off, burn it, and get the help that we absolutely need. All right, so what I want you to do is listen to a couple of the things that I have to say. And if it sounds like you, even if you're catching this in the replay, love for this to be interactive, just let me know. So are you overwhelmed in your travel business? Like, are you feeling like, I need a break, right? Are you uh, are you feeling the revenge travel, like you need to go out on a vacation? But you're like, what happens if I leave and I go on vacation Who's going to do my quotes? Like, what's going to happen to my business, right? You know, I need a vacation. Even though I just got out of town a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't for fun. So I'm totally needing a vacation. But, you know, on a serious note, what if you have a family emergency in your business, right? What's going to happen to your business if you need to step away for a couple of weeks, a couple of days? Um, you know, the question that I ask is, you know, what happens to your business when you're out of commission? Are you out of business? And we don't want to have businesses that are not able to sustain or operate without us. Literally, what you need to be working on right now is a way to unemploy yourself such that your business operates regardless if you're there or not. So before I uh, continue, what I want to do is I want to introduce myself. So if you are new to me, you're new to this channel, my name is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I come to you every single week talking all things launching, operating, and um, having a successful, profitable travel business. And so today what we're going to do is talk about throw away your superhero cape, right? Or as many of you are, superwomen, right? Sit it down, the superwomen um, syndrome, right? And get some some help and what do you need to do to think about getting help in your travel business right we are many many solopreneurs when you start your business you are by yourself you are alone and you are having to wear all of these different hats right you're having to be everyone everywhere all of the time and effectively what happens is we are setting ourselves up for overburn over is, is that a word overburn um burnout, burnout, overwhelmed, stressed out, and ultimately not in a position to be our best uh, service providers to our clients, uh, you know, family members to our family members, if your wives, husbands, right, mothers to your children, right? In order to do that, you've got to be able to ask for help. And sometimes it's really hard to ask for help in your business because right your family members probably don't understand what's going on in your business your husband or wife may not understand what's going on they know that you're working hours but if they're not intimately involved they're not the people that you can actually utilize or lean on to help you inside of the business proper maybe they can help you support your support you outside of the business but what you need is help in the business so how do you do that how do you set that up right how do you grow a team how do you how do you do all that stuff when it's just you running the business so that's what we're going to talk about today so this is a really favorite topic of mine. It's becoming one of my favorite topics. And the reason it's becoming one of my favorite topics is because I actually am in the process of building, you know, growing a team myself. So I understand the position that your travel businesses are in. I'm in that position, not so much as I was two years ago, certainly not even as much as I was last year. Our team has grown tremendously. So I wanted to share kind of what I've learned over the last several, specifically 12 months, 18 months on making um, our business, you know, solid with the, uh, the, a team. All right. So let's talk about that. All right. So are you guys excited about this topic? Like, 
you know, many of you are like, well, I'm not there yet. Like, it's too premature for me to be thinking about growing a team. I'm not, I'm not, uh, it's just me, right? I'm not making any sales. I don't need to think about a team. But actually, this is the time for you to be thinking about growing a team right now, right? It's the time now for you to be thinking about what happens if I'm not available? What happens if I need to, you know, continue to take some more meetings um, and I can't get I can't get this quote out, right? What happens when life happens, right? Should the business stop? And we don't want your businesses to stop if life should happen or if you become unavailable or frankly, if you just want to go on vacation, right? All right, so let's talk about some things. So that's what we're going to talk about, our tips and the strategy that you need to have in place and need to be thinking now so that you can make yourself unemployed in your own business, all right? So before we begin, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about what is it that, you know, I wrote here, you know, ask yourself, what do you enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing, right? <coughs> and what I mean by that is, you know, we're wearing like a bunch of different hats, right? We're wearing hats where, you know, we're sales, we're marketing, we're operations, we're admin, we're the accountant, you know, and if you're thinking about all the things that you do at home, you're probably the chauffeur, the cook, the cleaner, right? <laughs> you know, the support system, you're everything, right? But what do you enjoy doing in your business? And let me give you some examples of the things that I enjoy doing. I enjoy this, like I enjoy showing up to this community every single week. I enjoy doing these lives, right? I enjoy meeting with my clients. I enjoy coaching both uh, in a group setting and in an individual setting. Those are the things that I enjoy. Things that I don't enjoy that are necessary for my business. I don't really enjoy writing emails. Frankly, I'm not even good at it. I thought I enjoyed it, but I'm certainly not as good. Um, I'm not as good as my graphic artist on doing images. I used to think I enjoyed it, but until she showed me that I don't know what the heck I'm doing, I don't really do that anymore either, right? So there's a lot of things in your business that are critical to the success of your business that you may enjoy or not enjoy, right? So identify those things and quickly Let's put them on a list for you um, to determine, is that something that you want to continue to do? Ask yourself, you know, what do you want to continue to work on and those things that you want to quickly or long term outsource to someone else, either as an employee or as a contract work or job, right? It's really important to think to yourself, what are you going to keep, right? Do you enjoy uh, parts of your business and not other parts of your business, right? So if you joined me last week, one of the things that we talked about are, you know, how do you avoid working for free? And should you only be focused, you should only be focused on those activities associated with set getting you paid, right? Those are the things that you should be working on. So when you're a solopreneur, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're clearly working on the things that you should be. And then those things that you don't uh, that are not tied to sales or uh, tied to you making money, you want to make sure that you can try and outsource those out or at least have a plan to outsource them out as quickly as possible. So let's talk about what you like to enjoy to do. And what are the things that you like to do? Do you like talking to clients? Do you like doing research? Do you like putting together the quotes? Do you like just meeting with your clients? What are some of the things that you like to do in your business, right? I just gave you some of mine. I really enjoy coaching. Like I actually like being in front of my clients, um, talking to them about their businesses, um, helping them solve problems that they have, identifying their problems, creating plans. For those that you may not know, I'm a certified project manager. So one of the things I like doing is creating plans, schedules. I like I'm going to, I'm going to uh, sort of tell on myself, I love creating spreadsheets. <laughs> um, you know, I like those kind of things. So every time I'm supposed to give somebody else on my team a spreadsheet, I end up being the one to take it. And they're all like, oh, I'm just going to give up because somebody's going to end up taking it anyway. But you know, what do you like about your business, right? Those things that you like, write them down, remember them, circle them, right? And what we want to do is create a path that you, cre you create, at least while you're a solopreneur, those things that you absolutely enjoy doing, right? That's number one, right? I never want you to do what I did when I first started is I ended up creating a business that I was starting to resent, 
right? I didn't like my business because I was doing so many activities that I didn't enjoy doing, right? So I started to dread, like, you know, are you in your job, right? Do you have a full-time job and you're like, God, I got to get up again and I've got to go to work and right. And as if you, if your business that you're creating feels like that, you're doing something wrong. All right. Now, maybe there's some days that you, you feel like that, but every single day that you get up and you're feeling, God, I got to do that. Right. I got to do this work. Right. You've created the wrong business for yourself. You should love what you do. You should wake up and you should be like, Oh my God, I get to do it again. Oh my God, I get to do this again. And that's how I feel. Every, every time I come and I do this show, I'm like, I get to do it again, right? I get to do it again. And when I meet with my clients, I'm like, I love meeting with my client. It like, it gives me like, I don't know. I don't even know the best word to describe it, but it like, it like invigorates me, right? I really enjoy doing it. And so when I'm not doing those things, I really, I'm just like, right? I mean, for the longest time I was, you know, one of the things I, I, I say is, I really don't like scheduling emails. Like I really just fundamentally hate scheduling emails. Like I hate getting into the, our system, you know, cutting and pasting and putting it all together. Like that thing drives me insane, right? I don't know actually anybody on our team that likes doing that, but I for sure can't stand it, right? And I was spending hours scheduling emails, right? Scheduling emails is one of the major ways that we communicate with our community. And it's a necessary evil, but it's not a necessary evil. I'm better spent hours spending talking to clients, right? Right. That's what makes us money, right? That's what drives revenue in our business. Me getting in front of and talking to my clients, right? Email is necessary, but it's not critical. It's not as critical as me. So what should I, what should I as the owner be doing? I should be working on those things that are going to get us paid. Same thing for you, right? So what's going to get you paid as a travel professional, right? You doing discovery calls, you potentially doing the research, designing, but even redesigning, that can be outsourced. You can train somebody to research and find trips in your choice suppliers if you have the process to find. And we're going to talk about all those tips, right? So make sure you have a clear path of the things that you like to do, right? I'm not saying get rid of those things, but certainly make sure the things that you like to do are directly tied or that you're at least focused on those things directly tied to generating income, particularly when you're new. The other tasks that are critical, maybe indirectly tied to doing revenue that you don't enjoy so much. Let's see how we can get either a team member to help you with that, or you can outsource that work. All right. So let's talk about tips. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to define what your business functions are. And the reality is the business functions are general. It doesn't really matter what business it is. Here are the business functions that you need to ensure that you have accounted for in your business as follows. Sales, right? What is the process by which you are going to uh, take people into the buying process, right? So from a lead into a buyer, right? And hopefully, if you're doing it right, a repeat buyer. And then number two, marketing, right? How are you going to attract people into your business? Many of you, unfortunately, don't have a strategy for one, converting leads into paying clients and two, even attracting strangers, right? But those are two business functions that you need to have accounted for in your business. The third thing, third function in your business that you need to think about is you need to be thinking about admin, right? Sort of a no brainer, but some things that we don't think about, like, should you really be doing the taxes in your own business? Yeah, it'll save you a couple of hundred dollars, but is it the most effective utilization of your time? No, it's not. If you're, unless you've got a degree in accounting and you like know tax law, like you shouldn't be doing your taxes, right? Hire somebody to do that, right? Should you be doing, um, your own bookkeeping, right? Maybe not because it's, there's some services and they're really not as expensive as you think that can handle all your books so that your taxes become an easier thing to do at the end of the year, right? Those are examples of things that you can outsource in your business that are underneath admin, right? All right, so what, do, what else do I have here in terms of function? All right, so this is my favorite new function that, you know, maybe five years ago, or even when I started this business back in 2016, I knew that I needed to service my clients, but I didn't really have a process around that. And so now that's client fulfillment, right? Once you get a client, what do you do with that client? 
How do you make sure that that client gets the experience that you envisioned for your business, right? How do you fulfill your promise to your clients, right? So I call that client fulfillment. It is called client fulfillment. Uh, I also refer to it as client success. So we have a whole team of people focused on the success of our clients, right? Same thing for you. As a person gets onboarded into your travel business, how do you make sure that they get the bomb.com service, right? Every single time, how do you handle, how do you handle onboarding them? How do you handle managing them? How do you handle getting feedback from them, positive and negative, all of those things? How is that handled in your business, right? So, uh, you know, it's sales, marketing, admin, client fulfillment, and then general operations, right? You know, I'm pretty techie, uh, but for, for example, like I need to, I, I got a mic, and my mic is making noise and all that stuff, right? Like, how does all that stuff work, right? Your technology, your IT, it's, you know, initially it's you who's the IT person. Maybe you got, you know, a uh, geek squad helping you out if your computer goes down, right? But that all operation stuff, right? Your systems, getting your systems up and playing. Oftentimes we operate as the person who's doing all the IT work, right? You know, you got a mail system, you got a you got a computer system, you got a phone system, then you got this mic, you got lights, you got uh, monitors. How do you get all that stuff, right? So operations, right? You got technical operations and then you got business operations, right? What's the business processes that you're going to have to make sure that things work and operate all together, right? So those are your functions, right? Those are your functions in your business. Have you thought about those? Like, have you thought about how all that's going to work? Or did you just sort of jump in and you just started doing everything, right? That's what I did, right? I just started jumping in and I started doing things, right? I know how to, I know how to turn a computer on, <laughs> right? I know how to put things in, right? And when shit breaks, I'm like, oh shit, like, what am I going to do now, right? So I'm scrambling to try and figure out how to get things fixed when things are broken. So now I have somebody on standby if things break in my like technically if they break who do I call right so I'd have to try to google it all and try to be that person right so operations we have that down right admin we have that down right I outsource my bookkeeping outsource my taxes I outsource you know I outsource our web development right those are all things that we do so we've gone through and we've identified each of the functions in our business and as a result of that we've identified number two right is we've identified what the roles and responsibilities are for those functions right and this is standard sort of business stuff but you know we kind of forget about that because we're excited we have this business and we're operating as the one chick show right because it's not even one man show most of it. it's one chick show who's doing it all right and again i will tell you throw the super cape throw the cape away let's stop doing that to ourselves right you start this business and if you don't have a plan to address these functions one of two things will do will happen they will get ignored which is a recipe for disaster, or two, you will attempt to do all of the things that need to be done and you won't be able to do them well because we're not meant to be one people superheroes. But it, and but what I want to say is even the superheroes are not intended to be one people superheroes. If you think about like, like again, I'm a superhero geek, right? So when you watch superhero movies, right? When they try to operate by themselves and they don't have a support system, System, something bad always happens, right? You know, I think it's Spider-Man and even all the 15 versions of Spider-Man. You know, he needed the redhead chick to help him out. What is her? Mary Jane, right? As a support system to help him out emotionally for him to get through, right? Superman has a sidekick, right? Uh, you know, Batman's got Robin, right? Everybody's got some sort of help in the super superhero uh, space, right? Same thing for you. Who's your help? Who do you have as your Batman and Robin? Who do you have as your Mary Jane? Who do you have to help you get through inside of your business so that you can continue to do the superhero things that you do, right? We are not meant to do this business alone. So as a solopreneur, I say no to solopreneurship and I say at least have a partner in the game to help you with accountability from a personal perspective and then from 
from a business perspective, even if it's as much as a VA. When I started this business, I was definitely alone. First resource I had in the business was a lady by the name of Jam Lou. And by golly, her and I did some amazing shit. <laughs> it was just me and her for like, I think a year. And then that poor lady, you know, I damn near ran her to the ground. Um, and then we got another lady, right? And then, you know, we from there, we grew the team, right? But, you know, my Robin was, was Jam, right? Um, and she's the one that helped me not only, you know, in the business, but she was my support system. Uh, and she was, she was the Robin to my Batman, right? And uh, what we quickly learned is, is that, to be effective, we needed to grow the team. And as my vision grew, as did the team, right? And she couldn't do it all. I couldn't do it all. And my vision was so big and I was trying to do so much. And we both got burnt out, right? We both got burnt out and we were going and going and going. And then you just stop. Like you, your body is not intended to do as much as your vision is. And if you're really an entrepreneur, the vision that you have for your business is greater than you. Period. End of story. Every single day, you probably go to bed thinking about, what if I could do this? <laughs> what if I could do that? I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this, right? The vision and the brain and the ticking never stops, right? So as an, a true entrepreneur and a true visionary for your business, it's never going to stop, right? So you've got to have a team and you've got to be thinking about that now, right? So number two is to... Def uh, when, number one was to define the business functions. Number two was to define uh, business uh, roles and responsibilities for those functions. What things that you want to do versus those things that you want to outsource. And then number three is what's critical. I'm working with one of my clients right now, and uh, she's right in the 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 beginning of uh, defining her, um, her plan, her roadmap for 2021 and 2022. And we're going through and we're prioritizing what's important this year. So before we go and grow her team, right, we know what we even need to work on. I even know we we're defining what's important from a product and a service perspective this year that she wants a lot. She's got a huge vision. She wants to, you know, she got, I mean, the list of things that she came up with in terms of her travel business that she wants to launch products and services. It's long. It's huge. Her vision is great, right? But, you know, there's only a certain amount of, you know, time in the day, right? And so much bandwidth that you've got, you've got to prioritize what's critical for you and your roadmap for this year, next year, six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24, 48, whatever, you know, I like to do a three-year plan and then we just revamp it every year, right? Whatever it is that you want to do, what's critical for you now, right? And what is something that can wait, right? That's number, that's number three. And then once you understand that, then you've got to categorize that, right? What's, what's, what's a project, right? And you know, if you're new to projects and you don't know what that is, right? Something that has a start and an end, it's like a small thing, like creating your website is a project. That's not recurring. You're not doing website every single week, right? Um, you know, it's a one-time project. You can hire it out and then you're done, right? Recurring task, scheduling email, <laughs> Right. Scheduling email, writing emails, scheduling them out. Right. Like for us, you know, I go live every week. So there's a communication that goes out. There's a whole cadence to that. Right. What's a project and what's recurring. Right. Understand what those things are and what is it that it's got to get done now and what's got to get done uh, tomorrow or is going to get done in this year. Now, if you're new to your business only thing you really need to be focused on is getting your operations set up, getting your uh, client attraction system set up, right? If you don't have those two things set up, that's all you need to be focused on. Don't start trying to do partnerships. Don't start trying to get government contracts. Don't start doing all this extra stuff. Get the basics done first, right? Get your operations stuff done, right? Get it, get it done. Get it documented. Make sure it's clear, Um Make sure that you're clear about what your operations, how you're going to operate the business, what your steps are going to be, right? And then how you're going to do sales. So everything in the function when you're new needs to about, needs to be about defining, setup, and launching. That's it. Like those are the only three things you do. Define the process, document the process, launch, you know, launch the process, monitor it, and that's it. Don't try and do too many things at one time, right? Don't try and do too many um, areas of expertise at one time. Focus on one thing, right? That's part of the problem, too, is when you start your business, 
you got this big vision and you got all these things and you're trying to do too many things at one time, right? You're not focused on one thing, focus on one specialty, focus on one area of your business, right? Let's, and I'm going to give you an example because you know, wedding destination this is my first, uh, my favorite example, right? Let's say that you're, you've got a wedding destination. You want to specialize in wedding destinations, right? First thing that you need to focus is on one service, right? And maybe that's just getting, you know, couples out of town, right? Don't start doing anniversary services, romance services, all of these different services, just focus on getting a couple and their group out of town, group offense, that's it. Don't focus on officiating services and you know, you want to do event planning and you want to do this and you want to do that, right? Focus on one service, one product, right? Focus on one supplier initially, maybe two at the most, right? Get a very finite focus. That's going to be your first, first release, right? And then maybe six months with you got that process down and you're repeating and you're able to do it. Somebody gives you a request, right? You know, you're going to send them the sandals and you, you know, you're going to use the same sandals, uh, BDM, right? You're going to pretty much have these three packages that you're going to be selecting from. And that's what you're doing. Rinse and repeat. You can do it on autopilot. Boom. Then you can add another one, right? Then you can add maybe anniversary services or something else, right? The problem is it's too much for one person all at the same time. You got to prioritize, right? Makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So you want to prioritize what's important for you to do six, 12, 18 months long term, right? Make sure you understand what's a project, a one-time event versus something that's recurring, right? And then what we do is, you know, when I say define roles and responsibilities, this is sort of where you also make sure you understand what the job descriptions are, right? You may, you're like, oh my God, son, this is a lot. Like, I don't know all this stuff, right? Right. That's where we come in. Right. That's where our team comes in, because this is what we do. Rinse and rinse and repeat all the time, not only for our clients, but ourselves as well. Right. So this is where my team comes in. This is where our program comes in is to help you define all of this for your business and make sure, at least from a launch perspective, you've got yourself covered. You've got your basics and your foundations done. Right. That you're not worried about operations, terms, conditions, what your business process is, because we've got a blueprint for success. All you got to do is follow it, right? You don't have to worry about your client attraction system. How are you going to get new clients? How are you going to get strangers to figure it out, right? How do you pick a niche? All that is wrapped up in the program that we have, right? Travel Passions to Profit is all about that thing, right? So we've got it to help you get it done. The question is, is it the right time? Is it for you? And that's stuff that we figure out when we meet with you, all right? So that is the the... I think we're number four, right? So number five is to document your processes. So let's say you've got, you are specializing in wedding destinations and your first product offering or service offering is, is to do quotes for brides and grooms up to 50 people. That's the first service that you want to do, right? Well, what's that process? Like, how are you going to take quotes? What are you going to charge, right? Who are you going to go to for your supplier? What are you going to do to fulfill the supplier? How do you take payments, right? Document all that process, right? Because all of those steps that you're doing, those become potential steps that you can assign to an admin to do, right? You know, if, like maybe you don't like the whole fulfillment of the order, right? You like to design the package and that's it, but you don't like to put the quote together. You don't like to, you know, you, you know, I'd like you to sit down with your clients and review your quotes, particularly in the beginning, but maybe you don't like to like actually book it in the system um, you know, in the, the sandal system or whatever supplier system, you don't like all that stuff, right? Those are great activities to outsource, right? Maybe you don't even like the research. Like, I mean, it's okay. I personally don't like the research. I just like the results. I like the presentation, right? So I've trained people on how to do the research the way that I would do because I have standards for which that we deliver our products to our clients, right? Same thing for you, right? So think about what it is that you do, what you like to do, and what potentially the processes that you want followed. Document it now. Don't wait until you're ready to hire somebody. Do it now. So as you're defining it, document it. And I don't mean in your head, you're like, okay, I do step one, I do step two. Let me see. Don't have it on sticky notes. 
pay the tax now. This is what my coach tells me, pay the tax now. And that paying of the tax now is to document it, get pen to paper. And I mean, get it on a document, a Word document. If you're using Google, a Google document, document step one, right? Do the research. And here are the suppliers that I go to to do the research. Step two, right? Um, you know, I reach out to my BDM and see if there's any special step three, right? Whatever those steps are, document them. It will save you time in the, in the, in the future. All right. Now you got, you, you got, you got your plan in place. You know who you want to hire. You know what you want to do. You know the process that you want to follow. Now, and you know what the job description is. Now it's time to hire. Post the job on a job board. Then you're like, well, how the hell am I going to post jobs? I don't know where to get people, right? You know, actually, there's some really good places that you can get people, right? You know, many people have VA services. I know several travel agents, uh, agents in, in this group who have VA services, right? Definitely start with your friends and family to see if there's any referrals that you can get. You know, there's several companies that I use for internships and for uh, outsourcing and hiring um, international uh, workers. My uh, my team is both in the United States and international. I've got team in India. I've got team in the Philippines. Right? You know, be be open to doing something that you may have never done before, which is, you know, how do you hire? I mean, I was literally scared to death to hire someone outside of the United States. I I, I had worked with uh, team members outside of the United States for years, but I was very scared to hire outside of the United States until I did it. And then once I've done it, like 90% of my team is out of the United States. I, you know, 90% of my team is not out of the United States and we get shit done different time zones. I mean, I got team members who are, I think 13 hours away different from me, 10 hours away different, five hours away different, and we still get it done and we get it done pretty efficiently. Right? So, once you decide what your business process is, you know who's going to do it, what you're looking for, post on job boards. You probably ask, well, what job boards, right? I use Upworks. I use another company called onlinejobs.ph. I use another company called um, Acadium for interns. Um, you know, I, uh, I uh, use, uh, I'm trying to think if there's another resource. Those are my three primary resources and then also referrals. So I take referrals, I'll seek out. So even my team members, they will refer uh, friends of theirs who are in, uh, who are looking for business functions that we do. Um, and so I take recommendations from our team members and all of that. So, you know, post a job, make sure you have a hiring process, right? Make sure you have a set of criteria that somebody has to meet and the you know the real secret i think to our success in building a team is is that we do a test uh test sample right so if i'm looking for somebody to write emails for me right i will have them do a test sample of that i pay them a small fee and then i have them do it and then that gives me the opportunity to sort of test before i actually make the commitment um with it and then and then we hire right so what is hire right the worst mistake you can do as an entrepreneur is hire and not train, right? So this is why I say define your business process up front, hire, train, monitor, and get feedback, right? Hire, train, monitor, and get feedback. So you need to understand what it is you're training. Nobody understands your business like you do. Don't expect people to get inside of your head. Make sure you have the process documented you document the process, you train them on the process that you have, and then you give them the space to do it. Don't micromanage the hell out of them. Give them the space to do it, make mistakes, give them a, a feedback loop. And once that training is processed, hold people accountable, right? And don't hang on too long if they're not doing and delivering, right? Rinse and repeat, right? So don't be afraid to pull that trigger. So those are my tips for you tonight, right? Is, you know, throw the cape away, build a business that you love, based on what you want to do. You know, the biggest thing I get to do as the CEO of my company is focus on my superpower, right? And do the things that I love to do. And I get to outsource and do whatever I don't want. You know, I don't, you know, obviously there's things that there, there are things that I don't like to do and I do still have to do them. But I would say about 80 
plus percent of what I do, I love what I do. And right, the other stuff that needs to get done, I'm not doing it anymore, right? It hasn't been something that I've been able to do overnight, but it's certainly something that was done with the plan. And that plan, we continue to source and we continue to fulfill based on the plan that we set. So we've got triggers that define what, when we want to um, bring additional people on board. We, you know, we look at our numbers to make sure that we can afford to do that. All of that. But you know what? I'm going to give you the secret, right? Don't quit your job prematurely because you're frustrated, right? Because if you have a job that's your silent investor that allows you to give you the space to build this kind of stuff out before you just say deuces, do it, right? Take the time to build your business. So when you do finally say deuces, you don't have to come back, right? So I'm never going to advocate for you to quit, throw in the towel, give, give your job the middle finger before you're ready to do that. And this is one of those critical things that entrepreneurs ignore. They don't think about building their team. They don't think about the stress of running a business by themselves. And they do it to the point that they've burned themselves out. They either give up on their business, right? They quit their job prematurely because they think if they just give more time to the business, it's going to be better. And the reality is, no, you're doing too much. You probably need to help and grow the team sooner than you think, right? Keep the job a little bit longer so that you can have the resources to be able to do that without the stress and that you're not continuing to be a one person show. All right. So one of the things that I do see in comments is like, how do you build trust? And I'm going to, I'm going to address that question because I think it's a really valuable question when it comes to, to, to trusting your baby, which is your business, parts of your business to someone else. And here's the reality. God gave you a superpower. He, he, if you believe God is a he or she, whatever your belief is, you're right. You know, I'm not trying to get into that. What, whoever you believe God to be, right, gave you a special power. And I do believe that I have a special power. You have a special power. And you can do that power effortlessly, right? And so there are many things that need to be done. As soon as you let go of the reins that you are not meant to do everything, right? Um, and you document your process, it becomes pretty easy to let it go if you train that person. So you set the expectations, right? You meet regularly to ensure that the people that you've entrusted to do the job, that they're the right person. I'm not saying you know, throw it at somebody and walk away and be done. That is a recipe for disaster, right? I'm not saying micromanage the hell out of them either and check up on them every five minutes because that's also a recipe of disaster. You'll never keep anybody on your team. But what I am saying is trust the process. You know, I actually have that written up here. Trust the process. If you've documented your business processes, you've done the due diligence to figure out what it is and you've, seek, you've sought out help, maybe through a coach or training or whatever, so that you understand. Because I don't know every business process, right? I've, I've reached out for help. I have have coaches that have helped me in business functions that are not my expertise. I got a degree in accounting, right? I got admin stuff down pat, right? But sales and marketing hasn't always been my shtick. It hasn't been my thing. I have sales coaches to help me with the sales process, to define my marketing process so that I can make this like a machine, right? So if you need to outsource that and get that skill set, do it, right? Don't be afraid to do that. And once you have it and you document it, then, you know, expend the effort, pay the tax to train somebody, right? Once you train them, give them the space to make mistakes, you course correct, give them feedback, and then let it go, right? People are not perfect. You're not perfect. Give people the space to do that. And then what you're going to look up, you're going to look up and you're going to be able to go on vacation and things are not going to stop. <laughs> things are not going to stop. You're going to be able to go on vacation and you're going to look up and you're going to be able to hear the PayPal bling even in your absence, right? You're going to be able to, quotes are going to be going out even when you're not doing that. You know, people are going to be getting service, right? Getting the answers to your question without you being slave to the computer or to your text message, right? Design the system to be like that now, right? So that when you do decide to pull the trigger on hiring, you're ready. When you do decide to go on vacation, you can, right? Because, you know, the worst thing is to be on vacation and still be slave to that phone. 
The worst thing is to be on vacation or out of town and away from your computer and you're taking your computer with you because you're afraid to let go. Right. That's the worst thing that you can do in this business or any business that you start is not being able to walk away and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Right. So think about what you envision now. Start sowing those seeds today so that when you're ready to reap the reward, you position yourself to do that. So again, burn the cape. This is a cape burning meeting. Burn that cape. Make sure that if you're not ready to at least burn it, that you're at least setting up the logs to set the fire so that when you can throw that cape in, you've got the fires burning and everything's ready to go. You know, if you want to get these systems and these functions up and running in your business, right? Reach out for help, right? My client support specialist team is here for you. Their job, like I said, is not to sell you uh, travel passion to profit. Their job is to make sure that we understand your problem and see if we've got some existing resources that can help you. See if I'm even the right person to help you. And then if I am, and if they think that you and I should have a conversation, then they'll offer that as an opportunity for you to meet with me. All right. That's what we do every day. Every single day. You come, we got new people coming in the group. We've got existing people who've never seen me. Maybe you've not been contacted by somebody and you would. You know that you're struggling. Maybe you don't know how to sell um, in your business, right? Maybe you're trying to sell or you're trying to market and you're not getting the results that you want, right? Reach out. Just raise your hand and say, help, right? One of my client support specialists, they'll reach out to you. And I will tell you, if you join this group, they've already reached out to you. All you need to do is check your new messages. Maybe there's a message for them that already lets you know that they've reached out. Again, all they're looking to do is help connect you to resources that we have available. I come every single week inside of this group um, giving you tips and tricks about launching, about operating, about um, selling, marketing, um, operations, mindset of a successful and profit tra profitable travel business. So listen, it was a pleasure uh, talking with you all today. I'm talking all things launching, operating, and the mindset of a successful and profitable travel business. Have a great evening and I will talk to you soon. Bye.